Welcome to the second episode of Series 44, everyone. We'll get right back to making our characters in just a moment. But first, some announcements. If you haven't noticed, we broke our normal schedule this month quite a bit by releasing a Spotlight episode in the middle of a series. We just couldn't wait to get this bonus episode to you, however, because the game we spotlighted... Spotlit? was Haunted Hill Academy, a game about a spooky boarding school and trying to uncover its mysteries while being a student there. We had a lot of fun creating characters for it, and Amelia's son is obsessed with the game as well, so we need to help ensure that this gets funded. It runs through the end of the month, and it only takes $5 to get the game in a plain text format or $15 for a well-presented PDF. It may say it's a two-player game, but there are additional rules for groups, and you can hear that group mechanic in action in our bonus episode. So check out the Kickstarter if you haven't already. It would be really cool to have this game be published, if for nothing else, if for nothing else, just so Nate gets to play it. That'd be worth it in the end. Finally, a Catacon event registration is live for everyone. Amelia and I both have some great events planned, so absolutely check those out. Amelia is running a couple Arium Create sessions that weekend, and we are both doing a panel together for this very show. I also have two games of Chimera planned, as well as one game of Our Final Gathering, which I think I'll be trying to run every year if this one goes well too. It was a lot of fun the first time, and I can't wait to see how it goes this next time. I can't think of any other announcements for this episode, so we'll get right to it. Thanks for your patience, as our schedule gets a little wonky leading into November. I'm on the final stretch of preparing for the move, so things should go back to normal once a catacomb is done with. Join me back here for the call to action after the show. But until then, enjoy the episode. Character Creation Cast. We rolled our characteristics and just started rolling up our backgrounds to learn more about our characters. We're picking up right where we left off. Enjoy. So next is meaningful locations. Uh, so rolling on this, I have gotten an eight, which is your family home. Meaningful locations. For me, I've got... The grave of a significant person. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mine is a place connected with your ideology, which is a belief in fate. So what is a place connected to a belief in fate? It could be a church. Mm -hmm. Could be uh, Could be like a, a gambling parlor. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As like a cliff that somebody accidentally fell uh -huh. off of. Mm hmm. Who is this significant person that uh, that has a grave that... Hmm. I'm going to make note of these and see how they all kind of connect together before I yeah. decide how... It's a good... Like, yeah. what any of those things exactly. are. Exactly. Um, and you kind of jump between this and your, your, your character skills and such as you begin to work things out. And next, uh, treasured possessions. Yeah, yeah treasured a, possessions. A sporting item. Oh, yes. Ooh. Um, I rolled something you found but don't know what it is. Oh, perfect. Ooh. I got something given to you by your significant person, so my sibling. You could you could have your entire character based off that one significant person because you've got the significant it, location it, being right. the grave, you've got something that was given to you by them. Yeah. Yeah. I every single one so far has related to them in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you've got a maybe you've got a um, twin. Yeah. So the Ooh, the evil Maybe you are um pretending to be Ooh, your twin. A twin. That sounds really interesting. Maybe you stole your twin's identity. Your twin is dead, and now you're pretending to like. Or you could even just you'd be pretending, pretending to they be, were you pretending to be yeah pretending to be one of your 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 brothers or sisters. Yeah. Okay. I I really like 
I really like that I stole their identity and their treasured possession is their identity. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, because because they died. Uh, because, okay, so the the first one, my ideology and belief was, what is this evil? Uh, there is an evil in society that should be rooted out. Um, I wrote The Rise of Capitalism, because why not? Uh, because um, that's our theme. Mm -hmm. That's her theme now, apparently. Um, <laughs> so then, um, sibling, a feeling of regret. I didn't help them out in a situation uh, that ended their life. Ooh. And the grave is my sibling. Um and I took their identity. That's wow. Okay, that's deep. Huh. That's that's a that's an intense story right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yours all like clicked together, really. Yeah, I nicely. still have traits to do, but yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens with traits too. I don't like the trait that I rolled. I got a good reputation. No, like you can that. always reroll. What? What? Well, it's interesting though because you could have a good reputation and not have it be earned. That's true. Um, I got loyal for my trait, which is again that's so right, you right in there with uh, with my background. Sometimes it really works. Sometimes it really fits together. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, I've rolled a three, which is a dreamer. Oh, so the next thing that we can jump onto is creating. Uh, so choosing rather our occupation. So uh, occupations in Call of Cthulhu define the skills that we have access to. Now, technically, you can create your own occupation. So really, uh, you can kind of pick whichever skills you want. But um, there are a list of sample occupations that are listed on page 4041 of the Call of Cthulhu rulebook. And you can also find some additional occupations in the Investigator Handbook. Okay. When you choose your occupation, you'll see a couple of rules around uh, your occupational skill points. And this is basically how you determine how many points you have to spend across your various skills. So all the occupations are built using education. That's your training in your occupation, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then every other occupation will also have one other characteristic that they draw from. Now, these characteristics can be uh, your strength, your dexterity, your education, your um, appearance or your power, uh, your size, your constitution. I don't believe constitution is used, but your um, your your size, your uh, and your intelligence definitely aren't. Nor is your luck. Um, so, what is a great way to start is to look at the characteristics that you have generated, and to figure out what your highest one is. Um, so, for example, in my case. I have a really high power. I have a power of 80. So I will start looking towards things that use power, which, you know, musician uh, is one of them. Uh, zealot, I believe, is also one of them. Uh, so I've got a couple of options there. If, for example, dex was your highest, you might look at police officer or at drifter or at um, mm. athlete or something like that. And I think I'm going to take artist as my... Interesting. So if I wanted to uh, power game the amount of skill points I do get, mm -hmm. I would go for, because uh, education is kind of the base, right? Yes. You can also, there are also ones that use education times two, so two times four. So yep. um, you can you can take a yep. like scholar or something. Yeah. So I would be looking at either int or appearance to go with it, because those are both 70. So for you me. can't take int. Int will not be, will not appear in any of them. So appearance. Oh, interesting. So I, I shouldn't look out for those then. Interesting. Yeah, so okay. Education, appearance, dexterity, power. Those are the ones that I see, that right? I've seen, yeah. Okay. Because those are all, like, not as good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my con is 80. <laughs> Everything else is, like, hmm, 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. I guess my appearance is... That's really interesting. So appearance is good for entertainer. Uh... Oh, it's... Uh, I mean, it's not bad for zealot no. either so <laughs> big fan of that and as i mentioned there's also some additional um occupations inside the investigator handbook and look at those too interesting there's a couple that i'm looking at right now that that go completely different directions um between con man mm -hmm. um from the the criminal uh, background in the investigator guide 
um, or dilettante. Uh, both rely on appearance, uh, which is good. Um, and both would probably be uh, good uh, reasons for why I am taking over my twin's identity. Yeah. I love the idea. I'm just, you know, going to throw throw ideas that I've had about your character at you now because of what what all the amazing things you roll. I think dilettante would be really yeah. cool. You could do something like, you know, you 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 were both, you know, the uh, heirs to some massive family fortune, but you squandered yeah. yours and and lost it all. Um, and uh, you know, somehow your your uh, your brother gets killed and you've adopted uh his identity or your sister gets killed and you've adopted her identity and uh you've taken the the, the fortune because you lost all yours and yeah. you need it. Oh that's so good. And then the grave would be my name yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh <laughs> that's that's horrible. But oh goodness. <laughs> um, my other thought was also entertainer, like an actor. Um, but that might have, uh, goodness. Yeah. Cause then, then the famous actor would have died. Um, and then I would have taken my, my siblings identity or, or vice versa. Mm. Um, but I, I, I do like this whole, uh, dilettante. Like I, I, all my, my stuff was squandered. Capitalism is evil, but my, my sibling was this like really well-rounded uh, person that had like a lot of wealth to their name. So to keep that going, I, I kind of took over their business and their life at that point. Oh, goodness. I don't know. The one in here that I'm leaning toward, honestly, is bartender. Oh, fantastic. Um, since I have, you know, um, let's see, a belief in fate and a place connected with fate. And I don't know, I feel like we can play a lot of darts and a lot of uh, poker in the back of a bar. Oh. We can make a lot of a lot of shifty deals. And also, my treasure possession is a sporting item. Mm. Um, <laughs> so I just feel like I feel like this is a sports bar. Now, now. if we are playing oh, that- in the traditional uh, United States kind of New England setting uh, in the 20s, it's important to remember that it will be prohibition. So mm. uh, being mm. a bartender has some additional cool things about it. Um, it also says I have a good reputation. Mm. So uh, reputation for what? I don't know. Actually having real yeah. booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to go with dilettante. Um, I really love that whole like my 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 break was unlucky. Uh, my siblings' break was very lucky, and and because of my actions, they died, um, or because my lack of action at some point they had died. Mm-hmm. If if it, if it is your and, twin, um, and I'm just just completely spitballing here, uh, maybe maybe you got in a bunch of debt. Uh, and they killed your brother thinking that your brother was you or something. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, that's horrible. It's a bit nasty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me pressure you. <laughs> okay, no, that's that's beautiful. So once we've established our uh, occupation, the next step is we go through and we now... Uh, use the occupation traits we've decided. So for example, I, I'm taking artist, which uses power in education. So I times my power by two, I times my education by two, and I get the final total value. So in my case, my education is 70, which comes out to 140, and my power is uh, 80, which comes out to 160. Uh, so those together will add up to 300. Um, and I can then assign those 300 points amongst all of my uh, occupational skills. And those are the skills that are listed uh, alongside the occupation that you selected. So in my case, oh, with artist, I have uh, an art and craft of my choice, history, natural world, an interpersonal skill, another language, psychology, spot hidden, and any two other skills. Okay. Now we will get a couple of other skills uh, down the line. So if there's something that you're missing, don't that you really want, don't stress about it. But you now spread out all these skills. How I like to do things myself, I just assign everything to fifty. I think that going super super high um, uh, tends to remove some of the excitement. Although I will occasionally take one skill at about seventy if it's a defining characteristic. Uh, but by and large, I just like to put everything to fifty. Okay. 
we're in the number crunching section. Once we're through this, we're ready to play. Wonderful. So I'm just checking the boxes of all these skills that I have, um, and I can figure everything out from there. Yeah, One same. interpersonal skill, charm, fast talk, intimidate, or persuade. Yes, yeah, so those are the four talky skills. Persuade being trying to convince someone to do something. Intimidate being trying to scare them uh, or coerce them. Uh, charm being friendly and getting people to like you and enjoy your company. And fast talk basically being lying. I got to go with fast talk. I think that your character would be pretty good at it, all things considered. I know. Any three other skills as personal or air specialties? Okay. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I get any one other. Yeah, the only one in here I don't like is, like, uh, that I have um, fighting, brawl. But I'm like, I can't. Hmm, it's not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> you you have a, I think you should be fine still. Your, your, your damage bonus will be determined by your strength and your size. So you should still hit the standard um, oh, damage okay, bonus, yeah. which means that fighting brawl won't hurt you. Okay, because my strength is really low, but my size is pretty high. Yeah, well, so. we can figure that out right now. Um, do you have the auto-calculated uh, spreadsheet up? or? Yeah. Okay, so you should have a damage bonus in the bottom corner. Does your build say negative one or zero or one? Hold on. Uh, zero. Zero. Okay, that's totally fine. So you're not at the bonus stage where you're like a big, tough brawler, uh, but you're perfectly fine. All right. Very nice. <laughs> I'm trying to decide on my one other skill. I know. A sleight of hand, maybe? That's a good one. I wonder... Hmm. Um, what did I choose there? I'm wondering, is, like, medicine a reasonable... Yeah, I mean, that I would... I mean, because I would... feel like if we're talking about, like, 20s-era bartender, like, you should maybe oh, have yeah. some, like... Basic you know, first, like, first aid of all, knowledge. I mean, first of all, like, first aid knowledge. Um, like, oops, I poisoned my customers. But also, <laughs> like... You know, I feel like there's a level of, like, a chemistry and, like, that is where a lot of that stuff was coming from, was, like, medical grade, like, isopropyl alcohol kind of, you know, mm -hmm. um, taking things that were meant for medicinal purposes and then making booze out of them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. I mean, also from, like, a power gaming standpoint, somebody should know how to do medicine. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Someone should. Oh, boy. Um, because you picked dilettante. What did James pick? Uh, I picked an artist. Oh, okay, Ooh, cool. Yeah, then I'm lovely. definitely going to go ahead and uh, pick medicine as <laughs> my last skill here. Because artists uh, don't know about medicine. Because artists and dilettantes <laughs> don't know anything about medicine. No, 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 but I was saying, obviously, if we're talking about, like, 20s era prohibition and, um, you know, that we were talking about using a lot of, like, uh, medicinal and, like, medical grade alcohols yeah. um, being you know, distilled into something moderately drinkable. Sounds fantastic. So, um, <laughs> you know, and I said also maybe like yeah. maybe an important thing to know about um, not poisoning my own customers. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> so there's a level of that too. A if I'm going to maintain my good reputation, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly, I'm poisoning them in the, just the right way. Right. Yeah. So so I took acting as my art and craft. Mm. Um, and then I took uh, French as my other language. Ooh. Brilliant. Um, and because then you like the word dilettante? I French? do. It sounds French. <laughs> it, it does sound French, but maybe. I took Spanish. I don't know. Um, and then the, uh, the three that I chose, the three other skills were uh, law, listen, and psychology. Fantastic. Ooh. All good choices. Yeah. Uh, I tried to, tried to think of somebody that, uh, that, will be able to pull off like playing their twin yeah yeah, yeah. i will say that um the typical uh, other language uh tends to be because of course this is called cthulhu you know ancient greek or latin or hieroglyphic so that you can decode the tome that said having french and spanish will particularly help especially if you're going to be going to areas that are french or spanish speaking so that you can mm -hmm. get through absolutely yeah. I, I for for whatever reason Latin did not even cross my mind uh, in a game that probably heavily utilizes that in the 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 wild mythos uh, tomes like that you find. Thinking about this, Ryan, though, and we you have such a weird level of like power gaming versus making characters that are like totally useless. Like we have yep. this terrible mix because we don't ever have to like 
you know, Ryan and I always say, like, we never have to suffer the consequences of the decisions that we make on this show because we just make the characters and then we don't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. So we can make all kinds of choices that, you know, like, you know, taking French instead of Latin that, like, in a real game would probably not be useful, but we don't have to deal with that. Um, but Ryan also likes to power game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, you have, always have great stats and then you pick skills that are useless. <laughs> And I love that about you. It's fine. <laughs> um, so I, I'm looking at percentages uh, for assigning that to all my skills. And I'm noticing on the sheets themselves, there are uh, uh, parentheses uh, with percentages into them in them next to the skills right now. So like for my art and craft, it has 5% in there. For French, it's 1% and so on. Uh, is that like a starting percentage? Yes. So every skill has a base value in it, and you'll see things like swim, like jump, like uh, stealth, e persuade. They have base values, and this basically means that anybody has a little bit of this skill. You have a starting ability in it. So the okay. point that you put into it adds on top of that. Okay, oh, very nice. I was going to ask about that, because a lot of skill-based games, there's that question of like, well, what if I have to roll a skill that I don't have? Um, so it does, you do have like a little bit of things. Um, that's really interesting. Sometimes only 5%. So yeah, <laughs> good right. luck, but <laughs> there, I don't know, it's better a, than nothing. There is a system in Call of Cthulhu where you're, um, you gain, uh, if, if you have a skill above in languages is the most common. If, so if you have French above 50, you would gain 10 in all other romance languages. Um, oh, okay. And Similarly, if you picked another, if you picked another language, you sort of get oh, the related ones. I like that. I think I want to. I want to do that. So it has to be above fifty or exactly fifty. I believe it has to be above fifty. All right, fifty-two. Fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll make the math easy. So it is twenty points. Education times two and appearance times two. Now, the one thing I should have mentioned because I completely forgot. Now I'm a terrible person. Is you will also notice that you have a credit rating there mm -hmm. your credit rating is your wealth it is also your reputation and your um ability sort of appear in well-to-do society now it's not your if you you can kind of have a low reputation and people you know still think you're great um this is kind of your 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 credit rating in terms of your uh, very official uh uh like ability to, um, you know, uh, command people based on your reputation and standing. Um, you need to apply your credit rating with your educational points, um, and you will see that your skill has a distinct range. So, for example, if you pick author, the credit rating range is 9 to 30. If you pick engineer, the range is 30 to 60. If you pick doctor of medicine, the range is 30 to 80. Dilettante, 50 to 99, because of course you're a dilettante. Exactly. So how do you determine what, where you lie within there? Uh, you pick somewhere within that range and you have to assign points from your distribution of points that you're spreading throughout everything. Oh, okay. So it starts at the lowest and you can... Just it, 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 starts, it actually starts to zero. So if you have 50, oh. you have to put in 50 points. Oh, fancy. Okay. It's minus well, eight I'm, to twenty-five, which is, which is a terrible thing that I should have mentioned earlier because it's pretty critical. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, oh goodness! So I have to throw fifty points at it, regardless. All right, so I've got thirty-five left. What can I do with that? Oh gosh, I hate math. Okay. God, this is this is really tingling my power my power gaming brain. <laughs> okay, so I have eight. Oh, there's got one. Um, the skill ride is that. Um, so that For, is, yeah, riding animals, riding bicycles, uh, all okay. kinds of things like that. It's interesting that it's, uh, I guess, riding animals and stuff makes sense. Riding bicycles, I guess, yeah. You don't really know how to do it unless you know how to do it. Horse riding, obviously a big thing if you're playing in the Wild West, things like that. And even in the oh, 1920s, very there's still, you know, getting up on a horse every now and again. I pop 15 points into ride. Push me up to 20. Oh, these are probably bad choices, but you know what? It's fine. I think I think I've got it. Uh, I spent my two hundred and seventy points. All right, perfect. Um, after you have done that, you are going to want to take a look at your intelligence, and you're going to want to times that by two, and you can add that number of points to any skill you'd like. 
This represents your hobbyist abilities. Ooh. So what have you been doing in your spare time? Picked up a little locksmithing, maybe? Oh, that's really interesting. Maybe some psychoanalysis. So what are we multiplying by two? Sorry. Uh, Our intelligence. intelligence. Wait, so that's like 140 points. Yep, and you can spread those yep. wherever you'd like afterwards, after you've ah. done your education. Okay. <laughs> These don't have to be in your, your professional skills. This is just wherever you'd like. Mm-hmm. Wait, so we did our education and like so whatever from our career or our yep. occupation. Yep, yep, yep. And then now we do intelligence on top of yep, that, right? Yep. Okay. Gosh, this is all I hate math. Ryan, why'd you pick a math game? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, fine. it's 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 kind of a front-loaded thing. Once you've done this, you're in the clear and you kind of never really have to do any of this again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when uh cuz the the character sheet that we have on here auto calculates the half and the fifth on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you always know what you're kind of rolling under, which is really cool. Um, one question I did have, uh, what happens if you roll the exact number? Is that that is a, a pass. hit? Or, that is a pass. Yep. Wonderful. Good to know. See, I need to like make, I need to write this down because I'm trying to like math at this and <laughs> I can't do it in my head. I like how driving an automobile is uh, 20%, whereas ride starts at 5%. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess point the steering wheel, right? Whereas the horse has a mind of its own. Uh huh. Gonna put some points into persuade. Oh, first aid also. I know I have medicine, but also first aid. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, medicine sounds like it's more, uh, yeah, definitely uh, doctor level stuff, right? Mm hmm. So Ooh, probably got, law too. I feel like that's a thing that I'm gonna need to deal yeah. with. Yeah, I've got I've got fifty in law right now. Yeah, I only put twenty five in there for now, but we'll see. Psychoanalysis. Hmm. I, I was like thinking about bartender that too. Does. <laughs> I mean, right, right. Um, I was thinking about that so I can uh, psychoanalyze my my brother's life uh, post mortem mm-hmm. and and try to better be. Um, Do you have disguise? Oh, is that a skill? Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I, I, I'm putting 35, 30 points in that, so I'm at 35. Yep, yep, yep. yep. That's all You're of it. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Gosh. So yeah, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of good uh, skills here for this character. Oh, Ryan, it's going to take everything in me to not pick a library use. <laughs> <laughs> I've got you some know, library I love use a good, if that makes a it good easier. Library Listen, skill. library use is really critical in 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 Call of Cthulhu. There's a lot of times where you know you you figure out a couple of clues, and then the immediate option is quick. Everyone in the library. And honestly, that's that's your ticket into the uh, furthering your power later on in the in the sessions, right? Absolutely. It, it's very helpful uh, right. to have that kind of information. And um, in, in longer campaigns, you know, Horror on the Orient Express, it's really, really funny. That's a campaign where you're on the Orient Express and, um, you know, bad things are happening at each of the stops. And it really gets to the point where you arrive at a city and you kind of come out cautiously waiting for something to attack you. And they go, all right, quick, everyone to the library and hurry on. <laughs> as you start to <laughs> practically get as many books as you can, as much reading done as possible. Hurry, hurry, mm-hmm. hurry. Absolutely. So, gosh, I could have put more points into my credit rating. Super rich sounds fun, but that's 49 more points or 48 more points than what I put in there. So did you just put the base? I put yours? fifty. I put 51 points. What is the base for yours? Uh, 50 is the lowest I could go. Okay. So, yeah, mine I, was my range was 8 to 25. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'm like, uh, you know, despite having slowly, a good reputation, apparently my credit is very low. Yeah. I'm I'm slowly discovering like my my siblings' fortune, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm a, I'm assuming that they have hidden away some things that uh, I I still have yet to uh, figure out how to access. Yeah, yeah, and you're you're trying to trying to get a hold of the um the reins. You know, you have you meeting with the lawyer only through correspondence, so there's no awkward questions. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. I, I still haven't been able to tell if this is a good character or a bad character. And like we'll never in terms really of morality. Know because we don't have to. 
Well, we'll get there in the in the uh, fan fiction section, I'm sure. Well, Ryan, I'm really proud of you that you are at a point where you can say that you don't know if they're a good character or a bad character, <laughs> as true. opposed to like series four, <laughs> where Senda kept telling you over and over again, no, they are a bad person. And you kept saying, but like, not that bad. And she kept saying, no, Ryan, bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're very bad. Uh, that was the beginning of the end of my uh, moral character compass. Uh, I think Deadlands was the end of your moral uh, character yep, compass. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. I'm really glad that I've been able to witness this growth. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. All right, I've, I've, I think I've put together my character. I'm almost there. I have 20 more points that I just I'm have debating to like... on uh, subtracting 48 points from things and just going super rich because you know why not it's pretty helpful i will tell you you know what we're gonna just spend this last 20 points in a cult <laughs> <laughs> i tried not to uh. <laughs> i held out as long as i could uh-huh <laughs> i have to be at least a little bit myself all right i'm gonna lower this and up my worth i'm gonna lower um Oh, that one hurts a little bit. It's okay. 25. <laughs> Add it up by six. There we go. We're getting there. We're up to 86 credit rating right now. Ooh. Oh, my God. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, I think. Yeah. Where does that leave me now? 96. Credit rating times uh, 20. Ten, sorry, I, I was like, you, in, in, during character creation, you can't put a skill over... 90 i believe credit rating might be an oh. exception but my understanding is 90 is the highest oh let me see okay i have a question on the backstory page yes there's injuries and scars phobias and manias i know what a phobia is what is a mania so a mania, it's like a thing you're obsessed with exactly yeah so okay. the inverse of a phobia those starts um uh uh, by default blank of course you can add something if it's pertinent to your character um you may develop them throughout play gotcha so I was like, I know what mania is in general because I have that, but. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to, I'm I'm going to just stick it at 90 and put those six points back somewhere just so I know that we're fine. We'll put that back <laughs> in psychology. That's fine. And one more point somewhere. Fast talk. Sure. There we go. Brilliant. Now I don't, now I don't have to look it up. <laughs> and with that, uh, our characters are complete. We now look towards very quickly a couple of final details, but if you have the auto-calculating sheet, those will have already been generated. So your hit points, your movement rate, your build, things like that. So movement rate is useful in chases. Hit points is how much health you have. Magic point determines how much oomph you can put into your spells. Your damage bonus is how hard you hit things um, and how effective you are in wrestling, things like that. Um, let's determine our character's age. Should have probably done Ooh, this yes. earlier, but that's okay. Um, pick an age. I'm just gonna go 24. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, 33. I feel like I want to be like 40. Perfect. So 40 is technically in the bracket uh, where you start to feel the effects of age for the first time. So, really? Because I'm 33, and I'm pretty sure I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mechanically, at least. So, okay. So first of all, for the uh, two of us who are in the 20 to 40 year old bracket, we make two improvement checks for education. So this means we now roll a D100 and we want to fail this. We are rolling against our education and we want to fail. So we want to roll higher. Yes. Oh boy. My first roll was a success, which means not great. Oh. And my second I one was also a, a success. So I rolled a two for my first one. Yep. I saw the zero zero and I was very hopeful, but oh. then uh, uh, 42, I also succeeded. Okay, uh, both nothing of those happens then. Well. For us, our characters are fine. Uh, okay. But uh, you shall, uh, I don't have the same experience. Um, so uh, you need to make a, uh, you, need, you need to do exact. Uh, oh, we shouldn't have done two. We should have just done one. You do two. <laughs> I do okay. two education rolls? Yes, that's right. We should okay. have just done the one. Sorry, and those those are D10s, right? Yeah, D100s. D100s, okay. Oh, hey, look at that. That's an 93. Ooh, so that means you failed. I know. All right, in which case you can increase your education by 1D10. Ooh. 
Because I... Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's interesting. Four. Four. So your education goes up by four and make a second education improvement test. Okay. I'll change this before I forget. Wow. Now it's 69. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Nice. All right, that is 31. Okay, so you've only increased your education by four, but bear in mind that this, that will give you an extra uh, couple, of, couple of points to play with. So you should No! Have, you don't worry, it's only an extra, it's only an extra um, eight points. Four, right? Uh, double, yep. so eight points. Yep. Oh, God, that's even worse. <laughs> Just okay. toss them in something. I know. Toss them in Look language. at that. First day, now it's 18. There you go. Look at that. Brilliant. Done. Um, and uh, you also, ah, uh, tragedy, you must deduct five points from either your strength, your constitution, your dex- or your dexterity. I'm going to put my constitution down to 75. Fantastic. And <laughs> you reduce your appearance by five. That's just garbage. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. That is done. So now we need names, right? The... The other book has has names in it. What? The, yes, you the, can use uh, mm-hmm. random. You could, you could. There's tables that you can roll on. Otherwise, you can decide on your on your name. Um, let's oh. assume that we'll be playing in the traditional New England setting. Uh, so, if that gives you any guidance as to names you'd like to pick, of course, you might not be from New England, but there you go. All right, I'm going for it. Uh, table me up. If you have a random table, I'm going to roll on it. You yeah. Know, right? Did you find it? It's on page it 54. It is. It's on page 54. Yep. Okay. All right. So I rolled a two again. Interesting. Abraham or Agatha. We'll see what my surname is. And uh, I'll choose based on that. Okay. 91. Valier. Ooh, interesting. I like that. Agatha. I'm going to go with Agatha. Agatha Valley. I don't know. I got Rupert or Phyllis, and I'm just not sure. I want to see what my twin's name is. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Very cool. <laughs> 91. Sybil. I like good that. good name. I'm just really not loving any of these here. Gonna keep rolling. So I, I, I always go by Sybil, unless you know my secret. Ah. Which, what, is, what is your secret name? My my secret name is Agatha. My sibling's name, whose identity I have become, is Sybil. Ooh, roll the 100. Ooh. It's Winifred, and obviously that's what we're going with, because that is my parents' dog's name. <laughs> it's fate. I'm going with uh, she, her pronouns. Perfect. What was your character's name uh, then, James? Uh, I'm going to go with Grégoire Moulinier. I'm going to take a, take a French name. Um, Ooh, nice. And I have my character is an artist, and I have given them. I've decided to make the most intolerable artist of all time. They <gasps> have huge intimidate. Uh, they're a genius, and and you you are distracting <laughs> them from their work as they oh, no. stomp about their uh, apartment, <laughs> flinging paint everywhere and yelling to themselves. Oh, One of lovely. the last names in this table is Slaughter, and so obviously, even without rolling, I'm going to go ahead and pick that. Very cool. <laughs> Can't spell slaughter without laughter. Exactly. <laughs> oh, this is very good. Residence. The classic would be Arkham. Oh, yeah. But what is the name of my bar? Ooh. Ooh. Gosh, that's a good question, right? Because we can't just call it the slaughterhouse. Even though uh, I really want yeah, to. Come on, that's <laughs> you, the best. You the slaughterhouse. have to. That's you so good. You have to. Okay. Uh, H-A-U-S. Duh. <laughs> I'm just going to write this down for my residence so that I don't forget. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Um, I guess my residence would have to be um, the Valier Estate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in uh, Arkham. It's actually in uh, the suburbs. In the suburbs of Arkham. <laughs> <laughs> the, po- the posh 1920s suburbs of Arkham. Yep. <laughs> That would be so much worse, I would imagine, because all the horror is going to start on the outside, on the outskirts, and work its way inwards. Exactly. Uh, oh, you just, you no, yeah, suburbs, suburbs are bad news. You'll, you'll, you'll end no. up getting eaten there. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're in a fancy mansion. 
uh, in, in the moat. rich part of the which part crocodiles. of the suburbs? <laughs> yeah, uh, Cthulhu esque crocodiles mm-hmm. guarding my mansion. Very sure. How, how I got them? Who knows? <laughs> Don't ask questions. I just paint extra eyes on regular crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> Did Phenomenal. you hire an artist to do that for you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the work. It must the, be complete. The... <laughs> I've added extra legs too. You can't stop me. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> the commentary on the times. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so it, it sounds like we did it. It sounds like yep. we made it people. Uh, what about the, what about luck? Luck, yes, luck. that final last touch. So roll 3d6 and times it by five. Let's see, it turned um, real Amelia, Amelia is not very lucky. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, fake Amelia is not bad. Luck is my lowest at 35. Ooh, well, that makes sense. Your character fell on some hard times. I know. i going to have to build that back up somehow. You do get lucky and you do earn luck uh, throughout play, but you also spend it throughout play. So, yeah. You know. Oh, Mine's interesting. 70. 70. Oh, you are very lucky. Wow. Mine is 45. Very nice. And with that. And what is, oh, sorry. What is our starting sanity then, too? Your starting sanity is equal to your power. Ooh. Aww. <laughs> aww. <laughs> aww. <laughs> Was that an aww, I'm too sane, or aww, I'm not sane enough? <laughs> well, it's only 35, so. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, well, that just means you get to get to the fun part quicker. That's it's true. just like real Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, with that, we are done. Woo! Oh, that's, that's, this was really fun. Yes. Um, there was a lot of math, but, but, uh, it, it didn't feel like it was overpowering, at least. No, um, it wasn't terribly mathy math because I could round everything to like fives. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, except for first aid, which I put at 18. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was Amelia levels of math. Like, <laughs> I, I, yep. Dear listeners, I could do it and so can you. <laughs> Um, it's true. And yeah, from there, your characters don't change a huge amount in Call of Cthulhu. You have improvement checks as they their skills gradually increase. Uh, but most of the ch- what changes will be their story, their attitudes. You might okay. add more to their backgrounds um, and flesh out new interesting details. But these investigators, and you know, now we would figure out some links between the party. We would talk with our keeper, and we would get ready to dive in uh, to Call of Cthulhu and some cosmic horror. Very cool. Well, I'm excited to get to our fanfic in our next episode uh, about how we all got together and everything. Mm-hmm. James, thank you so much for joining us for our Call of Cthulhu character creation episodes. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here. Do you want to remind everybody where they can find you and what you're up to? Absolutely. You can find me on Twitter at Robo Pelican. And you can find me streaming Call of Cthulhu at the Stream of Chaos on the weekends. Check that out on the uh, Chaosium Twitch channel or on the Chaosium YouTube channel. Very cool. And uh, thank you, everybody else, for listening. And please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I didn't anticipate how much I'd be invested in these characters, but I'm really itching to play them right now. There was definitely a lot of math involved in the process, but that really did get my mind going for how to power game the system, and that's always fun. Uh, We got into some great discussion as well, uh, so I can't wait for you to hear that next episode. But before we let you go, we do have a couple calls to action. First up, if you are attending a catacon this year, check out our events. Amelia is running a couple world building sessions and I am running a couple chimera sessions as well as a session of my Dread Reflections Highlander mashup, our final gathering, the Dreaded Reflections of the Immortal Soul. If you are a patron of the One Shot Network and have access to the Secret Archive, you can actually hear how character creation works for that system right now. It's a ton of fun and ripe for historical shenanigans. In addition to all these games, Amelia and I are also planning a character creation cast creates random characters with you panel, where we'll have a wide array of random tables and utilizing audience participation, roll on them to create a group of random people and figure out what sort of setting they would play in. 
It was a lot of fun last time, and this next time should be even better. Finally, check out the Haunted Hill Academy Kickstarter that is still in need of your help to fund. It is a fantastic game about being a student at a spooky boarding school, and it seems ripe for Scooby-Doo shenanigans, eldritch horror, straight up wizarding school, or anything in between. The character creation is pretty great and gives you a lot of flexibility for your character. You can check out our spotlight episode on it from the last week, or you can go check out the Kickstarter right now and help get it funded. That's all we have for now. Until next time, stay safe, drink water, get vaccinated if you haven't yet, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Design Doc. Join hosts Hannah Schaefer and Evan Rowland as they redesign a role-playing game. Design Doc is an experiment in public participatory analog game design. It's fun, it's messy, and you're invited along for the ride.